depends upon several variable factors. Primary consideration must be given to the existing conditions inside and outside the shelter. Radiation levels inside the shelter will play a large role in determining the length of shelter stay. Other important factors to consider are overcrowding of the shelter occupants. Availability of adequate food and water for the shelter occupants. Sufficient medical supplies for the shelter stay. Presence of illness and disease. And of course, high temperature and humidity readings would be significant. Shelter emergence will depend on all of these in-shelter factors. In addition, any management decision to emerge from the shelter must be based on the following conditions outside the shelter. Radiation levels outside the shelter and radioactive contamination. Availability of safe food and water. availability of safe and adequate lodging facilities. Availability of general utilities. All of these outside conditions coupled with those inside the shelter will determine how soon the shelter occupants may leave the shelter. When radiation levels are low enough, monitoring teams can be sent from the shelter to the outside to gather radiation data. When radiation levels will permit, special mission teams can be outside the shelter to replenish food, water, medical supplies, and other items which will make the shelter stay more comfortable. The success of these special missions will depend on adequate planning. Hey, how would you like to change the scenery? Can't say that mine. What's up? Well, from all reports, it looks like it's safe to take a trip down the outside corridor. I discussed this with the Bill Center. The radar officer says you're not to exceed five Redkins. How far do you want us to go? I want you and Jimmy to go down that hall to the first left turn, and then as far as the elevator. And I mean just that. As far as the elevator. And no further. Whatever you say. But there's a Jim Dandy cafeteria right upstairs with loads of goodies. Sardines, soup, can, and... As far as the elevator, I understand. I understand. Oh, is that it? That's it. You and Jimmy shall off as soon as you're ready. Right. Come on, Jim. We got a big hike ahead of us. This is the first stage of emergence. Just down the hall, turn left, and as far as the elevator. It may not seem like much, but it is a big step. If the radar monitoring team's first probe into the area outside the shelter shows that the radiation level is low enough, the manager may deem it advisable to send out a party to secure needed supplies. Nice low readings, all the way, right up to the elevator. Good, good. I talked to the control center this afternoon. I got permission to get some supplies from the cafeteria. Well, that's good news. A little diet change would be pretty welcome. When do we go? Well, first of all, you know. And neither do you, Jim. But Pete and I know the layout of the cafeteria. We should. We've been eating there for about two years. Well, I know, but you had some extra exposure last night. And I want to rotate as often as I can. Harry, you're going to be leader tomorrow. I want you to get five volunteers. Jimmy and Pete, you can brief them on the location of the supplies. Oh yes, Pete, I need a monitor. Chick farm. Good. Now, Harry, I want you to tell everybody to keep an accurate list of everything they get. Uh, Susie, where's that? It's right here. Mr. Amber took Pat Wilson off the list. He was running the temperature this morning at sick call. Nothing serious, but he felt a little busy. Oh, I see. Well, there's no that. She's right, of course. This is just a list of my suggestions, Harry. Uh, Chick Farmer's asleep. You can brief him in the morning. Oh, we'll check and take first thing in square. Right, Jimmy? Right. Now, Harry, I know getting the groceries is very important, but if you find that the levels are higher than we anticipate, I want you to come back and fast. Okay. Listen, as long as Wilson is under the weather, do you mind if I take Phil Keating? I think you're doing him a lot of good. I'm with me. It's your party. I got you set to go at 10.30. That'll get you back here in time so we can monitor the supplies and have a new menu ready for lunch time. Okay, I guess that's it. Has anybody got anything to ask? I do. No, go ahead, Jenny. 
Well, I know it's no news that it's pretty warm in here, and a lot of people have been getting headaches. Nothing drastic, but the aspirin supply is getting a little low. Well, I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about that right now, Susie. There is a drugstore here in the area, and that's going to be one of my first missions on the outside, but not quite yet. Come on, anything else? Okay, that's it. Let's get some sleep. Emergence and its control are the duties of the shelter manager. As radiation decreases, each trip can become longer and farther afield, but it must be a gradual process. New supplies of food and medicine are not only important to physical needs, they provide a valuable morale booster. However, an emergence that is too early or too long could be dangerous. As reports are received from control center, the manager must evaluate the conditions outside his shelter in respect to the needs of the occupants within the shelter. Each mission must be planned with detailed, greatest care. Well, Harry, I guess congratulations are in order. That was a big success yesterday. Susie, did you see those kids stare into those sardines? I did pretty well myself. <laughs> now you say the levels were low. Yeah, even better than we expected. It would have been okay for almost twice the time. Well, I'd rather her on the safe side. Well, now tomorrow's going to be the big day. Susie, it was medical supplies that you were needing. I've gotten okay to send a mission out to that drugstore in Pine Street. Now, Harry, you'll be the leader. Well, Pete, I'll meet them in the morning. How about you, Jim? Fine. Good. Our control center says that your mission total is 10 rents. I got just have to go at 9.30. Nine. Who else is going? Well, that's up to you. But any volunteers that you get, be sure that there are people who haven't been outside. I want to rotate as much as possible. Exposure? Well, that is important, but I want to give everybody a turn at getting outside. Well, be sure that you give Susie a list of those you pick. Will do. What about our route? Anything special? Oh, yes, yes, one thing. Now, uh, here we are, and up here is the drugstore. Now, the obvious way to go would be 3rd Street, then up here through Pine to the drugstore. But the control center advises me that this area in here is hotter than the rest of the vicinity. So what we do is cut from here to Princess, Cross Blake, then down Pine Street to the side entrance of the drugstore. It'll take a few minutes longer, but I want to play it safe. Right. What supplies do we get? Jim, let's make sure their clothes are okay. Side cuffs, something to cover their heads, gloves. Right. You can check with Mrs. Lambert tomorrow about the medical supplies she'll be needing. Go and get some soap. And uh, bring back a little of those paperback books. You'll find them right inside as you go in. Oh, yes, Harry. Do you see any toys or anything the kids might like? I'll bring them along. Then. Now, next week, I'm going to talk to Control Center about sending you over to that hardware store. Isn't it? As radiation levels drop to a safe limit, the manager will rotate groups from the main shelter to other areas of the building with less protection. For example, people in a shelter with a protection factor of 150 can be rotated into outer rooms having protection factors of, say, 30, 40, 20. Later on, occupants will be permitted to leave the building on a rotational basis. As dependency on the shelter lessens, the need to re-establish the community increases. Homes and places of business may need repair. General utilities may not be operating. As soon as it is advisable, shelter occupants can return to their homes for increasing periods of time and begin the work that will eventually return their community to a normal condition.